Right everybody, welcome back to another video. It is a Monday evening today, just got back from college, as you can see by the very smart attire, something I don't really associate with myself on this channel. Normally quite a smart casual dress, but times are tough, so we're going to stick in the suit for this one. So we're going to kick off with, the obviously it's the championship review, as you all should know by now. Monday review, we're going to go for all the championship games over the weekend. We have got the West London, West London derby tonight. I'll, in two months we'll have to upload this, uh, upload this tomorrow really after the uh, West London derby. But I thought to upload it now and we can mention about the West London derby in our next video. So we're going to kick off with Barnsley. They lost 2-0 to Leeds at home. Sun Sky Sports, the early kick-off Saturday at half past 12. Good result for Leeds, really kicking on now. Inconsistency has been the key to them this season. But it's a positive result in a local derby. Taking 4,500 fans to Eric Quell is quite impressive as well. Good 2-0 win there. Samuel Size and uh, Alioski with the both the goals there. Probably been two of their standout players this term for Thomas Christensen's side. And it was a quite accomplished performance really for Leeds. Something they've done really well to bounce back from that, from that drubbing at Molyneux, Molyneux during the week um, against Wolves. Before that, got, got, got a good win against Middlesbrough. So it was always looking to try and get that inconsistency. Just try and get some positive results together. Two wins out of the three games this week isn't a, a bad return. Six from possible nine isn't always the worst return. And it's good to see them move in the right, right direction. And they're positive, looking, looking to move on now into the playoffs. So moving on, we've got Aston Villa. They beat Ipswich 2-0. A comfortable result for Aston Villa, really, in terms of them trying to hold tight a grip on the playoff place. Comfortable win over Aston Villa, um, over Ipswich. It wasn't really comfortable as Ipswich had a, had a goal in the first half. disallowed through Joe Garner. Joe Garner strike from a corner. I don't know what that was. I think give it for offside or a foul in the build-up. I don't know, but nonetheless, it can't, it really did prevent them from building in this game. And then allowed Dustin Villa. Albert Adoma is a man in form for for Villa at the moment. He come up with a goal as well. He's looking like a quite a good player. He's hitting form and he's been crucial to the reason why Aston Villa are so high up in the table. And it's good to see Aston Villa moving on now under Steve Bruce after the early season wobble. And it's another positive result for them. As for Ipswich, not the worst result. They play tomorrow night in a rearranged fixture against Derby, I think. It's be a good way for them to kick on now to Saturday and try and put that defeat to rest in a quick turnaround of the game and then following Saturday as well. So it's three games in a, in a week for them. Again, quite a congested fixture list for them. But they should, they, it's not the worst result for them as they currently sit in about ninth or 10th, I think it is at the moment, in the table. So when they go to this big, huge game in the relegation battle between Burton and Sunderland, Sunderland won 2-0 at the Pirelli Stadium. Goals from... Um, James Vaughan and um, George Honeyman secured the three points for Sunderland here for the Black Cats in this relegation six-pointer against um, Burton. If Sunderland hadn't won this game, then I'd be worried about them, but they've got that long overdue win. I think it's their first win since Norwich away in August, I think, off the top of my head, since that's a long time to go three months without a win, if that's the case. But a good start for Chris Carmel now. His first win in his second game in charge, and it's good to see him after the game go over to the Sunderland fans and give it all, the, give it all that and all the clapping and that. It's good to see he's a good man, he's Chris Coleman. Very passionate man, he'll galvanise Sunderland and he'll really start to turn them around, hopefully. So from a fellow Fulham fan's perspective, I'd see Chris Coleman do well there. Obviously, we play them away in a, in a couple of months, in about a few weeks' time in December. So, any Sunderland fans watching your first time one in the year will come up very shortly as we'll probably end up rolling over and letting you have that three points. Just the way we are against um, teams who've been managed by ex players and ex players who play against us as well. So, your, home, your, your long overdue home record shouldn't be uh, too long away now. It'd be nice if you could win before that, but. As for Burton, I think the relegation could be on the cards for them this season. The home form has been dreadful this season. I don't know how we even lost up there, to be honest. We didn't play too well, but enough about us. The home form hasn't been too great for Burton. Even away from home hasn't been fantastic. Just generally struggling to score goals has been their problem this year. Defensively, all over the shop again. Both their goals were easily preventable, in my opinion. And yeah, they sink now to second bottom of the championship table. Things aren't looking great for Nigel Clough's men. Moving to the next one, we've got Fulham. We beat Millwall 1-0. Quite a scrappy game, really. Going to be quite a pre-play. This is an actual a, a match day vlog video to this one. My recent upload on my channel. We've got a little bit more of a review after the vlog as well. In about two parts, two segments of that video. We've got match day vlog, we've got a little bit of a review as well. So that's been a bit more in-depth there. If you want to go and watch that, it's on the recent uploads on my channel. And yeah, it was a scrappy game, really, in a nutshell. Attacking quality wasn't there from both sides. I thought Mill will probably deserve the point, in, in all honesty. They had a couple of decent chances. Don't look a bad side. If they can just get a good goal scorer in January, it should be all right, really. So moving to the next one, Hull 2, Bristol City 3, Hull are 2 up in this game. I've said it all along this season, Hull at home, score plenty of goals, but just keeping them out at home has been a major thing for them. And the Slutsky's now under the cost of whether or not he might stay. He said in his interviews previously that he doesn't feel like he's the right man for the job. I mean, he's gone from being a happy man at the start of the season, he come across quite buoyant and bubbly, to really now seem like the results are really starting to build pressure on the bloke. I mean, he hasn't done, the work. He hasn't done fantastically well, and there's probably a lot of hope in um, Hull trying to build up and try and get into the Premier League again at the first time of asking. That's probably realistically not going to happen this season, in all honesty. And just really come and losing 3-2 to Bristol City, when you tune them up as well, you should be really trying to see the game out. This highlights their poor defensive record this season. They're shipping goals left, right and centre. That's for Bristol City. It's a good character for them to come back from 2-0 down. 
score score three goals as well and go on to win the game. Aidan Flynn with one of the goals, and also Josh Brown have got the winning winning goal as well. So it's good for them in terms of keeping their playoff places, keeping their playoff dreams alive this season. And it shows they've got a good character in, in, in their team. That's one of the main uh, main ingredients needed in terms of getting a team up. You need a good character to come back from come back from games and pick up points from losing situations where you might lose, where most teams might end up losing. You come back and get a point, maybe three points. They've got the three points in this one, and that's standing in a good stead. Could be a huge three points come May. Moving to the next game, we've got Middlesbrough got absolutely thumped by Derby 3-0 at the Riverside Saturday. Matej Vidra with all three goals. Looking like a man in form. I think he's got nine goals this season now. So I think that's... I think I saw in the highlights, that's his... He's totaled his last two totals already, I think, in about a handful of games already in November. So that's good to see for him from a personal perspective. As for Derby as a whole, they're moving on quite nicely now. Seven points from their last three games against Fulham. They've got Drew 1-1 there. Probably, the, probably isn't the worst point for us in terms of drawing with Derby. They went to keep my home to QPR beat them 2 0 quite comprehensively as well, and went up to the side of 3 0 there. So don't, they don't concede, don't, don't let in many goals, but scoring goals have not been a problem for them. They've got plenty of firepower, plenty of quality in their team throughout the ranks. They've got a good, good experience spine down running through the middle of the team, which is always going to be crucial in terms of this division as well. And it's a fantastic result for them. As for Middlesbrough, I don't think they're going to go up this season. It's going to be a tight one for them this year. Spent so much money trying to get up, but this was a, a big test they really had to pass in terms of trying to solid solidify any playoff credentials, and they haven't done that. So it's back to the drawing ball for them. So we're going to move into the next one, Norwich 1, Preston 1. Interesting game this was. On, off the pitch, a few problems. The assist, not one of the lines on of injury, which meant someone from the crowd, a qualified referee, had to become full official for the, like, the last 10 minutes of injury time. And really, apart, going back to during the game now, it's an interesting one. Norwich took the lead for a wonderful goal from James Madison. A lovely little free kick. Whether or not he meant it, I'm not too sure, but to me, it looked like he meant it. Good free kick over the keeper. And then Preston got an equalising goal from a set piece. Tom Barkhausen managed to get a touch to the header. I can't remember who it's from now, but it went in and they got a good point there. Quite a few chances in this game as well. Preston could have had a goal of the season. In fact, goal of the season contender had Alan Brown score that over a kick in the first half. What, what wonderful for that was. He's back to goal within two touches. He chests it down, gets a touch with an overhead kick onto the crossbar. What a goal. That would have gone in. That been an absolute screamer. Both sides now... After starting the season quite well, they've already hit mid-table blunders at the moment. They've got enough quality in both their sides to really try and kick on now. And it's just whether or not it's, it's a case of whether or not they can actually get some good form together. And over the next couple of games, we into Christmas period as well, which will be crucial for most of the sides now. Whether or not they can get some good form going forward as well. Moving to the next one, Reading nil, Sheffield Wednesday nil. Bit of a, a shock score line for me. I expected a couple of goals in this one between two sides. You have a tendency to play some good football. Obviously, you really like to keep the ball. Sheffield Wednesday more of an efficient character. Like inside, you do also play possession football, but a bit, can be a bit off of that bit more directness. Come back from against Ipswich, you get a good point at Portman Road the other, the other night. And look to try and build on this. They hadn't, no. Jordan Rhodes missed a couple of chances up at Ipswich, and then he went and missed it against Reading as well. Cross come in, headed it one. That's probably been the way he is at the moment. He's not hit the purple patch that he's really... Really was really brought in for last season. Really, he's known for really. It's quite a bit of a shock for them. As for Reading, a company line eighteenth, not the worst result in the world, really. But they need to try and get some goals on the ball now. That good win against Derby, they haven't really built on that solid win against Derby before to um, Pride Park. They need to try and build on that result and build on some good results now to try and get away from that relegation threatened zone. There's about six, seven teams down there, all equal, all on similar or equal points, and it just takes a couple of games now over this busy fixture list now to just really put you in that relegation zone or even push you up to mid-table. Who's the next one? This is probably one of the bankers of the weekend really for any accumulators. Uh, Wolves 5, Bolt 1. I mean, where do you start really? Wolves looking imperious this season. Seems to be defying everyone's thing of, oh, you know, these flair players like it during the winter. And they seem to be answering every critic's questions at the moment. What Liam Bellatini and Ruben Nevers are running the show for them up front. They're quite sound defensively. Willie Bolly got his first goal for Wolves. Yogo Jota and I said Leo Bonatini with his 11th goal of the season as well. One of the signings of the season in the championship. He's really adapted since from the Middle Eastern team, I think it was. So it's good for him to adapt. And then they've really tightened their grip on the on first place and really starting to move ahead of the other teams below them. As for Bolton, Phil Parkinson and Nuno Spirit Santo both got sent to the stands in this one, which is quite intriguing for a little touchline thing after a tackle by David Wheater. But Bolton dropped to bottom of the table now after Sunderland's win. And it's really going to be now a bit of pressure on them if they can really try and stay in this division or not. I just don't think they're going to score enough goals to really keep them up. And defensively, they're quite weak as well. So similar to Burton, I think they'll definitely be in League One next season. So we ended up an ultimate one. Sheffield United won, Birmingham won. What a goal by, um, Jema I think it's Jeffrey Bogue, I think his name is. Screamer of a goal at Bramall Lane there. Fantastic strike for Birmingham. It didn't look too bad. A bit of a little, little improvement on the recent performances for them. Then Leon Clark, the main man for Sheffield United this season. He's 10th, I think, of the season, I think it is now. 
and he gets them a point as well. Sheffield United probably won at their best, but they managed to come out and get a point, which is what all good sides would do. You win up, you play ugly and get something from the game, which is crucial for them. And that's for Birmingham. They move on now to another tight game. And they need to try and get some good form together as they're struggling at the moment. They've got a good quality in their side, but perhaps they could probably do with a decent midfielder who can probably retain possession of the ball a bit more alongside Keefton Bell and probably a, an old school centre half who can add that bit more of experience to their to, to the ranks. So going to the final game, it was Nottingham Forest 2, Cardiff. No, Nottingham Forest nil, sorry, Cardiff 2. And this is a good result for Cardiff. Danny Ward got one of the goals in this game and, my, and Sean Morrison as well. Good result for Cardiff. Keeps them high up into the automatic promotion places. Keeps them in touch with Sheffield United and also Wolves who are basically steamrolling ahead now. As for Nottingham Forest, sitting about mid-table now, basically in the top half now. So it wasn't the worst result, but they need to try and improve on results to try and keep themselves high up in the table and just try and keep tabs on that playoff pack. So once you let them get away, like last season, you want to get cut adrift because you want to try and give yourself as best chance as you, as you can over a season to sustain that and pace yourself correctly to try and finish in the best place possible so anyway guys there's my um, championship week 18 review if you like it hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you're new for more efl content and we'll see you all probably thursday for the next championship review for the next championship predictions bye bye